Hey, how's it going guys? Daniel from ModBot here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how I was able to print nylon on my Creality Ender 3 and which settings I used. So let's go ahead and get into that. <laughs> So before I get into hardware setup, let's talk about software and slicing settings. Uh, all of these parts were printed at a 0.2 millimeter layer resolution uh, with a 20% infill. Uh, the hot end was anywhere between 250 and 260. I fluctuated a little bit depending on the print. Uh, build plate was set to 100C, which was pretty much the max I was able to push my uh, hotbed without having to wait an eternity. Uh, retraction was 1.5 because I've got a direct drive set up and layer cooling was turned off. So now let's take a look at the actual hardware. So again, my Crowdiator 3 has a direct drive mod done to it. Um, for the bed adhesion on this, I used glass with glue stick. Uh, that's what I highly recommend for printing with nylon. Um, uh, something else that works really well is Garolite, but if you don't have Garolite accessible uh, and you've got glass, then glass with glue stick does a pretty good job as well. Uh, as far as the hot end goes, I'm running an all metal micro Swiss hot end, which I would strongly recommend running as well. Um, Although on some of this nylon, I was able to print it about 250 Celsius, which would be like the absolute cap I would ever consider uh, pushing the stock hot end that comes with this machine. Um, you're going to be much better off going with an all metal hot end so that way you can push it up even higher to like 255, 260, 265, which is just really going to help you with that uh, consistent layer adhesion and, and prevent any kind of delamination. So. Um, nylon is one of those materials that I know a ton about. Um, I've seen a lot of people 3D printing it. I've gotten a lot of questions about it. And so I'm very familiar with like the properties of nylon, the struggles, which is typically um, the, the issue with um, bed adhesion, really. It curls on the bottom. Um, but nylon's not one of those materials that I've typically needed to print much myself, just because most of the projects that I do, um, PLA or PETG, uh, is really more than sufficient while nylon has got incredibly high strength and uh, if you go with standard nylon like this stuff right here it's got some flex in it uh, but nylon does come in a ton of different flavors such as like matter hackers has nylon x and nylon g which are incredibly popular that are nylons infused with uh, carbon fiber and glass fibers which kind of modify the properties of nylon. So you get the high strength of nylon, but it gets rid of some of that flex. Um, the carbon fiber especially makes the part a lot more of a rigid part. So I, I honestly was really impressed that the Ender 3 was able to print out these parts and it wasn't too much issue. Uh, again, the main issue I really had still was bed adhesion, which is why I had to initially I started printing at 80 Celsius on the bed and I bumped it up to 100 Celsius. Um, I had to turn off the layer cooling fan completely and make sure that I had, uh, I put the nozzle a little bit closer to the bed than I probably would typically do uh, when just printing another material. I, I kind of wanted to smash that first layer into the glass just to ensure that it actually wasn't going anywhere because um, there was one print that <clears throat> I, I printed out that did have some pretty serious uh, curling on the corners. And so again, my fix with that was basically to um, print hotter, print closer to the bed and have plenty of glue stick. But as you can see here, uh, I printed out a couple of gears, I printed out a little uh, impeller, I printed out uh, a little uh, hose attachment as well as a servo mount and a bearing mount and I was able to do so with just this setup and I mean honestly all you'd have to do in my opinion is upgrade to an all metal hot end and then the ender could certainly do some nylon printing if you you know again change out your surface I don't recommend printing this on build tech uh, I think you'll have quite a lot of issues with adhesion and my ender was not enclosed I know that you can print nylons without an enclosure um, I would say that I've got this in a pretty controlled corner of my apartment where there's not a lot of uh, drafts or breezes coming through here so depending on your setup perhaps an enclosure could help with nylon printing um, just to help with more consistent uh, kind of temperature control but again I was able to do this without an enclosure and just some basic glue stick and glass so 
Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, again, I don't have much use case for putting nylon, but one of my big goals this year was to experiment more with uh, different filaments, just so that way I feel a little bit more comfortable and uh, also I'm able to answer your guys' questions as well, um, not just from he said, she said, but with firsthand experience. So. If you guys have any questions at all, let me know in the comments down below if there's anything I didn't address and I will gladly uh, do my best to help you out. Be sure to check out some other videos. I just recently did one on TPU printing uh, or specifically like Ninja Flex and Cheetah on the Ender 3, which I was uh, pleasantly surprised that the machine was able to do so well. Uh, and I recently also upgraded my Patreon uh, different tiers and rewards. I've got some really badass stickers coming in and a couple other really cool rewards. So if you enjoy the content and you want to support the channel, take a look at that. And if nothing else, be sure to subscribe for more awesome videos. As always, I really appreciate you watching my videos and look forward to seeing you next time. All right, guys, on that note, I am out. Take care. Peace.